Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another gun gripe episode for you and this is like kind of hot off the press. Breaking news. Yeah, and anyway, so so this is um some stuff that just happened and uh yeah, we, we want to kind of <sighs> mention it a little bit and uh, we feel that it's kind of an important talking point. And uh and guys look, uh I, I do want to mention before we get into today's video, mm -hmm. look. If you guys love the channel and, and love this content and you want to help support the channel, guys, there are ways that you can help support the channel if you wish. Uh, things like Patreon. We also sell a product called Man Cans, which is like a monthly mystery box. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of a guy box. And then we also have the shirts uh, through um, forcefromfreedom.com if you go over there and check them out. Guys, all the funds are graciously appreciated and helps us run our channel and keep this uh, content flowing for you guys. So if you love this stuff, please consider supporting the channel because uh, it's graciously appreciated. We're going to be talking today in this gun gripe about um, something that just happened up in Great Mills, Maryland. And, uh, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep this serious because this is a serious issue. But um, basically what just came across my desk and the reason that I feel it's important to talk about is because... This is technically a school shooting, but it doesn't fit the narrative of the, the anti-gun media. So they're, of course, keeping real hush-hush about this because what happened, uh, I'm going to spare you some of the more, uh, you know, kind of details here. But basically, uh, this kid who's 17 years old got mad and decided to go in, uh, and I guess he was arguing with an ex-girlfriend of his or something, decided to take a handgun uh, into school and shoot his ex-girlfriend and I guess some boy that she was talking to or maybe he was just near but a couple of uh, you know students got shot by another student who was 17 and the school resource officer responded within a minute mm -hmm. and shot the shot the the perpetrator and he died in the hospital so right now uh, you know we do have a couple of folks that were injured by the shooter mm -hmm. but they have not died uh, they've just been wounded and this proves uh, the validity of having armed resource officers in our schools, armed teachers, because it shows that a first responder is somebody who is there and that can immediately respond and take action against the mm -hmm. suspect uh, in question. I know it's hard. It's a hard concept to wrap around our minds when we think, okay, it's a student that might have done it or it's a young person. I know that's a hard pill to swallow, but we don't know what was going through this young man's mind, what he might have had going on. I mean, it, it's very, very slippery, but... The other way it doesn't fit their narrative is, wait a minute, he was 17. Hmm. So all this narrative that everybody wants to play into, oh, well, we got to raise the, the age to buy a gun from 18 to 21 on long guns, and you have to be 21 to buy a handgun. Well, wait a minute, he's 17. He can't buy a handgun, How so did where get did that? he get a handgun? Hmm. So it, Let's see. slippery slope, so guys. Either, I mean, come on. So there's no details about it yet, so he either stole it from somebody, Right. Um, he, you know, either either someone he knows or his parents, um, whatever the case is. I'm not sure exactly what Maryland's firearm storage policy laws are, but they've had assault weapons bans and stuff like that on the books for quite some time. Yeah. And uh, eight, 18 year olds can't buy handguns. 17 year olds can't buy handguns. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, well, uh, wait a minute, we can't report all this stuff because it doesn't fit our narrative. It we says that the this. ATF showed up and they responded to the scene and that they are running a trace on the gun. So I guarantee you they're going to try to figure out if he stole it or if it yep. was his parents' gun. Guys, I'm going to just say this. And I know some people may not agree with me. Some people might even think that I'm being wrong here. But look, raising a loving child starts in the household. I mean, these parents are, a lot of it is the fault of the parents not raising their kids right. You know what I mean? Like when I was growing no up, you, you would never have this kind of crap happening. I mean, I remember my grandpa picking me up from school and the principal coming out and looking at my grandpa's newest hunting rifle that he got. And my grandpa would check me out of school early on a Friday to go hunting. And then he knew the principal and the principal would come out. Yeah, hey, what's going on? And they would talk about the newest deer rifle we just got mm -hmm. and showing it off in the parking lot and looking at it. In the in, well it, before, during school hours before before that time you know there was no such thing as a gun free zone in a school dude I mean know. the the thing is though you know people are so much different now and I I don't even think it's that people are different it's just these these Perceptions. kids are not being raised properly like they're not getting the proper guidance that they need the proper male guidance and the proper female guidance Look. they need from their mom and their dad. They're not seeing the love they need in the household. They're not seeing the care and attention they deserve. We live in a society that has their face stuck in a phone all the time. And they can't see the, the reality of the world they live in. And they, they, 
there's no conversation, there's no love in the household. I don't know any other way to put it, but there's no parenting. This mm -hmm. stuff starts in the household. This ain't got nothing to do with, with damning society and their ability to own a gun because of one or two little things happening. You can't do that. That's highly unfair. You, I mean, those of us that were lucky enough to be raised right and raised in a household of people that care about the way you turn out, it's not our fault that society and their shenanigans just happen to spill out onto our plate. So, yeah, well, it's look, a huge issue. It starts in the household. The thing is, too, we've said it before, that over, over the course of time, Hollywood and mm. the media has pretty much painted a new light as far as gun ownership and gun owners themselves. We are the enemy. Right. We are a bunch of crazy right-wing extremists that hold hold dearly to God, our Bible, and our guns. Nothing and then, can be further from know, the truth. You it, know, it's just there's that perception out there, and it's hard to break that perception when it's been going on for years and years and years. Yeah, and the, me the media has really made a very, very frontline effort to repress things like we say and our types of views, people like us, people that you know, are a little bit more of a libertarian mindset. You know, I don't believe in political boundaries. I believe that um, what a man says is his word. If a person says he's going to do something, I expect him to do it. If a person runs on a campaign promise saying he's going to do something, then I expect that person to do it. If I give somebody my word, my word is my bond, and what I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do. So that's the way I look at all this stuff. Politics aside, I mean... It's not even political anymore. It's so bad that it's beyond politics. All politicians are showing that they can be crooked snakes in the grass. So we have to make very deliberate efforts to hold their feet to the fire and make sure that we're raising our kids right and teaching them right from wrong and teaching them the values that make up being an American and the positive parts of this country and the good things that we can affect and showing them love and attention and teaching them a skill, teaching them a trade, teaching them to handle firearms properly, and teaching them that guns are an integral part of American society and they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's a perfectly common item, no different than any other tool. But man, the, these stories really tick me off. In, mm -hmm. a, in, in one way, they make me mad. In the other way, there's a light into the tunnel because we see the cowards of Browards down in Broward County cowering in fear, not doing anything against the shooter. Now, what does this deputy do? In one minute, he went and also was a SWAT team member uh, in that. In that. Mm -hmm. So I want to say, so if anybody, what's his name? Let's see if it's on there. Where's his name? Deputy, where's he at? Deputy Blaine Gaskell. So look, mm -hmm. we need more deputies like Blaine Gaskell, who's trained, who has, has the heart to run towards the fight and to deal with this threat. And he dealt with the threat. He earned his pay that day. Or actually, today. I guess it was this morning, mm -hmm. wasn't it? it was. He earned his pay today. Guys, what more can we ask for? That's all we've <laughs> ever wanted, is for the people who put on the uniform to do their job. And he did his job without even thinking about it. Okay? Right. We need more people like him. <clears throat> all right. So this is from NBC News. All right. So Which is the only real story I can find. All right. So look. All right. This is one thing that really just really chaps me real bad because I've seen a few different stories with this sort of similar headline to it. It's like, okay, across, let's see, uh, House Minority Whip Stenny Hoyer, Democrat in Maryland, told NBC Washington that he was sickened to hear of another school shooting, this time in his district. Across the country, we've had 16 school shootings since the beginning of the year. Just about one a week, Hoyer said. It's unacceptable. We need to take action. Well, guess what, uh, Mr. Hoyer? Your information is incorrect because if you look at the details of that statement, if a person commits suicide on school grounds, that's a school shooting. If a gun is discharged within the area around a school property. An accident. Guess what? Or whatever. That is considered a school shooting, statistically. Well, they can now, manipulate the data you any can, way they You want. can manipulate the data. That's exactly what's going on here. <laughs> this crap is being manipulated. And see, these people look at this headline. It's like 18 school shootings, 16 school shootings. Oh, that's too... What's going on this here? This is an epidemic. This is oh. crazy. Ban all the guns. Get them guns out of here. Right. And then, you know, all right, the White House said this month that it will propose funding firearms training to school personnel and bolster firearm background checks. Okay, fine, whatever. Whatever. You know, but steered clear of a previous idea floated by President Donald Trump to raise the minimum age to buy semi-automatic weapons from 18 to 21. 
like we said in the beginning of the video. Oh, about the state of Maryland now? Uh, let's see. Oh, the state of Maryland prohibits anyone from the age under the age of 21 from having certain firearms, such as handguns and assault weapons. Which Fancy is not even that. a thing, but so, all right. I know what they mean. So, wait a minute. There's already a law in Maryland regarding this, and it was broken? Criminal but activity? Law. But it's the no. law. It's the really? law. You can't break the law. Nothing on a piece of paper is going to stop a mentally deranged individual from doing whatever it is he wants to do with whatever tool he finds necessary. Guys, I, I think, you know, what this really comes down to, we're going to keep this video kind of short, but I wanted to make Gosh. it because I thought it was an important story to talk about. Well, we've been griping all day about this we've stuff We've been anyways. griping all day about this stuff, you but know? It, it, this, is, this is a sad yet also encouraging thing to see because it shows all these little twerps that decide they might want to try to do something that, you know, there's going to be, if you decide to go to a school with a gun and do something, that a guy with a gun is going to meet you there and he's going to stop you, okay? And that's what happened. Now, look, <coughs> St. Mary's County should be proud out of, uh, of Deputy Gaskell. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do want to say, um, I know that Deputy Blaine Gaskell right now has probably got a lot going through his mind. Mm -hmm. You know, did he do the right thing? Did he react properly? And look, I, you know, I know he's probably not going to see this video, but maybe somebody that sees this video that knows him can pass along the <clears> information <throat> that, you know, you, you can't, you can't have any any type of negative view of how you do your job. I mean, you made a decision, you did what you had to do, and no, nobody should ever give you a hard time for that. I mean, you did the right thing. You stopped the shooter. You, you helped those people. And the, all these folks in society are going to want to point their finger. You know, on the other end of the spectrum, you have this, oh, well, the police brutality and police this and police that. I mean, look, guys, these men and women put this uniform on every day, mm -hmm. and they are charged to deal with society's bullcrap every single day. Their job is to deal with your dirty laundry so you don't have to. All the bull crap that you pick up your little cell phone and you call and, wow, they're doing this. Guess what? They send somebody out to go and talk to the people that you're complaining against. They have to do reports. They have to sometimes put themselves in danger. And Deputy Blaine Gaskell understood the, the, the risk, understood what could be asked of him, and he did it anyway. And that is the kind of men and women we need in uniform, people that do the right thing regardless of how scared they might be, Look, anybody that says they're not afraid that they're not afraid to go into combat and get shot at is lying. Because anybody who's ever been in a situation of having bullets slung at them will tell you that if you don't pee your pants, something's wrong. It's scary, okay? No. You don't know if that's going to be your last day on earth, but you do it anyway because it's your job. And no. when you put on that uniform, your job is to honor that uniform, and you're going to earn that uniform. That's and part he of earned the, his uniform. That's part of the definition of bravery. Is okay. It's you know, it's knowing the risks, knowing what might happen, but still doing it anyway. Now look, I, I want to say, look, I, I know that there's probably a lot going on in St. Mary's County right now, and they're, they're probably thinking a lot, and there's going to be some investigation. There's going to be more misinformation that gets spread. A lot. I, I already saw a, a plug over on Facebook where they were saying, oh, now they're saying that the kid might have shot himself, and it wasn't it kind of bull crap, whatever. You know as well as I do that... that, that, that it says right there in the article <laughs> that the, the officer fired... About simultaneously with the with the kid, right? You know, so don't, don't so don't tell me that he was. Oh, mm, no, crossfire! Come well, on, look, give me one, a break. You know, once all this this stuff uh, clears up, you know, my my thing is, look, these are the kind of stories that I believe are important and should be shared with people because it's a learning experience. Yep. I mean, guys. We have to look at the cause and effect situation. You can't look at it like, oh, well, we should ban all guns because if they didn't have a gun then this wouldn't have happened. That's bullcrap. He would have grabbed a tire iron or any other thing or a knife. He would have done. We have to stop this situation before it becomes a problem. And that comes down to being a dad and telling your 17-year-old son, well, look, son, it don't always work out with the girls, okay? You know, the, this girl ain't interested. There's other fish in the sea. How many times has, has your dad had the fish in the sea talk with you? Look, you've been heartbroken that your girl left you. And then your dad goes, look, son, it's going to be okay. There's other fish in the sea. You're young. You're, it's not going to be the first woman you ever care about, and it ain't going to be the last. Right? So the parents have to have these talks with their kids. Kids have to understand that there's, uh, there's other solutions. You can't just let the world crush you to the point where you break and well, do look, something bad. There has to be proper parenting. That's where all of this starts, and that's where people are dropping the ball, know. is not, not teaching their kids from right and wrong and not being role models to their children.
Yep. That is what causes this, not guns. Well, I mean, I, what world, what kind of world do we live in when, guess what? It's okay to do something like this because reasons. Because, oh, you know, so-and-so hurt me or hurt my feelings. Somebody was bullying me or, or whatever the case is. Whatever the reason, it is not okay. I mean, in when, what world is it okay? When, and like when I was in school, kids kids would just fight it out, and the teachers would go, "Well, all right, <laughs> all right." I mean, and, like me, you don't like me? Meet me after school. All right, you know, whatever. Mean, when, when now I, it's just I'm just gonna hold it back in. When I was in school, when I was 17 years old, when I was in school, you know, if you had a problem with somebody, you just you dealt with it, you settled, and it. then you, and then you became usually you were still friends afterwards, and there wasn't none of this. All right, well, I'm scared of this person. I'm gonna bring a gun and shoot him just because. Blah blah blah. Whatever. I mean, the, and all of this comes, all of this, you know, lack for the appreciation and sanctity of life, the lack of respect for your fellow human beings and just saying, I'm just going to take the easy way out. All of that comes from this have it now, instant gratification society, swipe my phone, there's the information, texting. Life is a joke to people. They, they don't see the serious consequences of the world they live in. They don't, you know, and these kids are not being taught by proper role models in the household mm -hmm. and that's what it comes down to you know children need to be raised properly by their 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 mother their father and they need to be shown love and attention and be shown discipline and justice you know being rewarded when you do something good mm -hmm. being punished when you do something bad these are all the consequences that make up the world we live in there is no such thing as a free lunch and when a shooter goes into a place at 17 year old with a, a, a pistol and decides that he's going to try to take the easy route what he felt was the easy route out that is a, a that is a direct result of not being raised properly mm -hmm. and not being raised in a household that has consequences. He, you know, and it really does start in the household. And I've been saying this all along that these parents have to do a better job of being role models to their children. Don't let you know these freaking iPads and phones and crap raise your kids. Take an active role in your children's life and be a role model to them, and this kind of bull crap won't happen. I have nothing further to add. But, I mean, it, it's the truth. It is. No, Nobody likes it, but that's the truth of well, this matter. The thing with this whole situation is, I mean, all right, you look at Maryland's gun laws. Did it stop this? No. They're some of the most prohibitive in the country, just like several other states. Yep. Did it stop it? No. You aren't going to legislate morality. How many times do we have to say it? But Mur it's like, murder was illegal this morning. It's like talking to a brick wall sometimes because guess what's going on right now? Uh, let's see. What did the governor say? Um, we need more than prayers. We've got to take action. Okay, so yeah, let's put more laws on the books that aren't that going we aren't going to be able to enforce to anyway. Work and that and, aren't going to work <laughs> and will not be enforced because they're unenforceable. I know. Oh, we need to legislate morality more and more and more. Yeah, keep thinking that. Well, guys, um, we hope that you know. Look, the thing is, our thoughts are definitely with the people that this affect. I mean, our, yeah. our our thoughts are. Yeah, go ahead and send that off. <sighs> yep, that works. All right. So see, our thoughts are with you know the St. Mary's Sheriff's Department. You know, the St. Mary's County Sheriff's uh, Department. Our and thoughts school. are with them, and yeah. I, I understand, I know that there's probably thoughts that are going through your mind, uh, you know, the deputy there, and I know he's probably thinking, did I do the right thing? I know that, you know, there obviously, it is a very, you know, you're, you're obviously distraught when you're dealing with a situation where something has occurred at your school, and I know it's a very scary thing, but try to look at the light at the end of the tunnel. Is that a good person did the right thing to stop this deranged person? And now, you know, a lot of people might have gotten hurt had that deputy not did his job, stepped into the right thing. Dare I say, if the cowards of Broward would have actually done their jobs, maybe that would have turned out a little bit different too. So look, you know, so so what? Is, is this this guy up here? Is is he uh is is he not good enough to do the job in in Broward there? And and the other guy in St. Mary's is. So what what's the standard there? You know what I mean? What what's the standard for what you have to do? Was there an SOP that wasn't followed? Is there something that wasn't clear and black and white about there's danger, go confront it? P seems pretty cut and dry to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, good job to those guys. And I, I, my, my thoughts are with the families of those affected. I know this is a difficult time, but I would implore and ask all of you to look at reason and look at the logical side of the situation, and you'll see that 
you know, what happened was probably for the better in terms of, you know, the way the situation was dealt with. You know, let, let's just be happy that wasn't more people and maybe we can get to the bottom of why this happened, more reasons behind uh, the motive. Mm -hmm. You know, what was, if we can get to the bottom of why this young man did what he did, we can help other students who may ha be having, going through the same type of issues. That's where that role model comes in, where you can go to your kids and go, look, well, this just happened. But look, you know as well as I do, son, that if something's ever going on, you tell me what's going on in your mind. Let's talk through this because mm. this is not worth it. What happened here is not worth it. It should be mm. a learning experience for people to walk away and understand how better they can help mentor their young young mm. people. And that <clears throat> is where the problem is. It has nothing to do with guns. It never has and never will. It all starts in the home. And I'm, I guarantee you this was a failure yeah, in that regard. I would say... Uh, just even being a parent, you know, aside, if, if you are an adult and, you know, you ignore a kid with, with a problem that they come to you with, then you're just about as guilty, you know, because these kids don't have any sort of outlet when people just keep turning them away, you know. I don't turn my kids away. If they have something to say or whatever the case is, they get heard. But whether or not it's the right thing that they're doing or whatever the case is, it's up to me to decide as a, as a responsible adult and a parent. But, you know, you, you push these kids away. You push and push and push further away from them, you know, then, I mean, the... the I've actually got an idea for something that we're going to do in the future. It's and just, so it's going to take me a little time to set it up, but yeah. we're going we're gonna to put it together something. I mean, the consequences kind of are what they are, that situation. I think that's happening, like Eric, you know, uh, described them I mean, it's, it's basically happening on a national level it's, it's a societal thing nowadays yeah. where everybody's getting participation trophies there's there's no there there's no like winners and losers it's all oh well we're just all equal no there there's people that are going to be better than others that's the way life is you know there's a team that's going to win there's a team that's going to lose if you don't strive for you know? being better and perfecting your existence then what are you doing you should always shoot high always shoot for the best that you can do in life why would you want anything different? And there's multiple people that are successful in the world that will tell you that. Always shoot the bar high as yep. you can. You can always fall short, but if you jump over the bar on the first leap, you're never going to know if that bar could have been higher. Always set the bar high. Always set a high standard for yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't ever take the easy route out. Ne never accept the easy way. And that's what this person did. But maybe he just wasn't properly motivated and that is the issue I have. So I hope that uh, everybody maybe takes something from this video, understand where we're coming from. Uh, we wanted to make a video about it because it just now came across our desk. But guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And look, you know, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to be a parent, okay? Talk to your dang kids. Talk to them. If, if you think they have a problem, talk to them. Stop everything you're doing. Put down the dang phone. Close the stupid game on your phone. Close the stupid Facebook app. Turn off dang YouTube, turn off this video right now, and go talk to your children and understand the world that they're living in, what they're having mm -hmm. to put up with, and be a role model to them. It's pretty cut and dry there. But guys, mm -hmm. thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. Many more on the way. Have a good one.